Hello and welcome back again. So, part 6, tutorial 11. It's been a long old tutorial this one. Um, I'm going to quickly cover just some more information about how to really get started using the APIs if you want to learn a bit more about the ins and outs of them and the actual background to what I've been doing here. Uh, in particular around object mass, as you can see here, I'm on the software development network and there's fantastic descriptions um, of the actual services, the methods, and then the data structures. So the reason I'm covering this quickly before we get into writing the um, Create Me a Virtual Machine is how would you figure out how to do this? Well, um, I showed before, I think in the previous tutorial, how you could make the call and print back to yourself, print R using uh, PHP, the actual um, array of objects and then within that standard class you can see the actual objects themselves. Um, if you want to get the background information, if you scroll down to the bottom here after it talks about the APIs, in my case go to the PHP one and again great information there but scroll down the bottom you get the reference API component. So we're using software account. Um, we're using that as the main service for all of the, the uh, calls we've been making so far. So if you click on that, that will then give you a list here on the left of all of the methods that you can call through the service. So we will be making a virtual machine, so if you whiz down to the bottom of this, we'll be using virtual guest in a minute to create a virtual guest, a virtual machine. And if we click on virtual guest, this will take us to an overview of the service and all of the methods that are pre-written that you can call to do things with your virtual guest. Now as you can see, there's a lot of documentation there um, and you know probably good to stop here you can power them on you can reboot them you can uh, perform a hard reboot or indeed even a soft reboot um, you can resume them to call them back into service so you can use the APIs uh, you know it really is almost infinitely configurable um, to control your infrastructure in software now, how do you control it? How do you pass uh, data to and from? Uh, you use the data type structure. So, I'll click on here. Yeah. Um, we will be creating a virtual machine. To do that, we will have to give it a domain. We will have to give it a host name. We will have to tell it how many CPUs. I think it's called start. Oh, there's memory. Tell it the amount of memory. Um, start CPUs, we will be giving it a, uh, a value for how many CPUs we want on that machine and whether it's um, hourly or monthly machine I think is covered in um, availability, back end, billing as you can see there's rather, a, there it is, hourly billing flag, whether or not this computing instance is a an hourly or not and you can see here it gives you the type so if we set this to true we will have an hourly billing machine um, so that's what we will have to use to build our object mask and this gives you all the data types that you will need to implement within your object mask to send that object to software to instance using the service virtual guest to instance your virtual machine. Um, now we can dive back into the code and see how we could do that. Welcome back. Uh, my name is Eamon Killian. This is tutorial 11, as you can see here. This is part six. Um, hopefully, the final part of um, part six. Uh, we're now actually going to write the final make machine on software uh, calling the APIs to actually make that machine. I've just talked through where you get the actual data and service information in terms of the software API. So 
let's get going on this. So we're going to require again, so I might as well just copy this over. We're going to require all the same things again that we had before, except this time we're going to get client and we're going to actually have the soft layer, whoops, underscore uh, virtual guest because we are going to be creating a virtual guest here. So there we go. We've got our username, our API key, and we'll be in. And I am going to delete the uh, this user and API after we've, I've finished all of these videos. So uh, that's why I'm not hiding the actual uh, API key. Um, we're then going to actually call um, the API using an object mask. Um, so we walked through just a few minutes ago the pieces of information that we're going to need. So we're going to actually want to um, configure an object such that um, we can send the information in as a standard uh, object. So um, well, we can go tump um, object or template object to keep it in line with the code that's on GitHub. Don't forget all this code's available on GitHub as well. Uh, so we're going to create a template object. It's going to be a new uh, standard class. There we go. That's all we need to say. Now, what piece of information are going to be in here? So we're going to have template object and it will have a host name. We will need to name our machine. So let's call it um, um, tutorial 11. Might as well. Um, we will then have information. The next piece of information is a domain. Let's put it in uh, for want of a, an easier one at the moment. Software.com. We will also be wanting uh, this object to contain information about how many CPUs. So we reviewed that. Start CPUs. Well, I'm just going to have one. Um, what sort of memory is this machine going to have? We're going to set the max memory as uh, it's in megabytes, so it'll be 1024 for a gig of mem. And then finally, we are going to have um, the actual hourly uh, hourly billing flag set to true. So we're going to order an hourly machine. So we're going to order a machine called Tutorial 11 in this domain with one CPU, uh, 1024, uh, uh, whoops, memory. Um, 1024 uh, megabytes of memory, so one gig, and it'll be an hourly billing machine. Now the next thing we're going to need is we're going to need what operating system reference code. So these are the standard builds that software has, and I know that there is a CentOS 6 64 bit machine. Now, how do you get that? Well, uh, we can open up a new terminal window and using our API, um, our, our, sorry, our Python CLI, <coughs> excuse me again, uh, we can go software um, um, images list, I think. Oops, SL image image list and that will talk out to software and get us the image list and there's all the images we can have and I know I'm going to need a CentOS 6 64 25 gig so we're going to take that one in a second so I'll slim that down that's where you can get information about these um, which will go into the very next line so we now have our operating system reference code and we now need our block device template group. Block device 
template group. Yep. And that is group. Um, not group. Global identifier. Yep. That should do it. And this is where we pop that code. So it will pick up this standard build. So this is going to be CentOS 664 standard build um, for our machine. Um, the last two things are, well, where do you want to put it? Whoops, if I could type anymore. Um, data center. And I'm going to put it in Amsterdam 01. And finally, we will have a local disk. I think that's uppercase D, disk flag with an uppercase. And I'll just make that false. Right, so we've described the machine we want built. So there it is, we've got um, our host name, domain name, number of CPUs, memory, etc. So all we want to do now is basically run this. So we will create a variable result, which is going to be the result of calling the client with create object, and then we feed it our object um, template that we just created, our template object. So we will feed the method create object with our object mask called template object. Okay, and once we've done that, we want to probably echo out, um, and now let's go for a H2 again, um, new virtual machine details slash h2 whoops Put that in the wrong place and I'm going to echo the I should have just grabbed this from the, from the other one when I grab it from here just to make it quicker for the video Let's do that. Um, it's not the object, it's the result. And piece, that's fine. Piece is key value. Echo those out. That will be fine. Yeah. Close the table and catch the exception. Lovely. That's it. So that will go off, log in, and create a virtual machine. Let's see that it does it. Might as well reload the page just in case. Fingers crossed. This could take a couple of seconds because it is having to create the actual machine. Right, so that's come back to us. I haven't had any emails. I'm waiting on an email coming up here. Let's just see what happened there. Well, we seem to have a, uh, a good call. Status is 200. Okay, give it a couple of minutes. In fact, why don't we actually just log in and see whether any action has been taken. I'm going to pause it there. Well, I've had time now to do a bit of routing around, and I still can't see precisely where I've gone wrong, but I've got a few ideas. I, I've also tried running it from the command line. As you can see, I got no feedback in terms of error code. Um, so, with that in mind, I went back and I had a look again at the data types um, to assess which one of these I've obviously said incorrectly. And I noted that data center, whoops, data center, type is location,
and we have to give it a name. So at the moment, I haven't said that it has a subcategory name underneath. Now maybe that's what's causing this. So let's save that, go back, and give it another go. Make a machine. Excellent. At least we got a return value now. We can now see up here, I've just been emailed by software to say thank you for placing your order. Give that another couple of minutes. I also get the getting started information. Um, and let's, well actually, let's do a show hardware and see whether we can see our new machine. There's that one. And here is tutorial 11. There it is, being created. One CPU, 1024 main memory. So it's being created. We can verify that again by going to the software customer portal. I'm on uh, devices, device list. Let's do a device list. And there it is, being created. So we've actually instanced a new virtual machine. Uh, my apologies for the uh, the um, um, mistake there on name, but you can see how you can direct and control all aspects of what you want to do on software using the APIs. So that's pretty much it. I mean, today we have uh, been through quite a lot in terms of what we've done. So we've now written a very simple white label portal that without ever having um, knowledge of the back-end software, you can show account details to your users or your um, subcontracted companies, your customers. You can give them access without them having to know or having direct logon into IBM software. So we've seen show account, show user, show hardware, and we've walked through the uh, 2200 uh, methods on offer that will allow you to manipulate and to control software remotely uh, using, in this instance, PHP, but you could use C Sharp, uh, Java, Python, and it gives you another capability to control, there it is, it's just come up saying it's now complete, it's fully loaded, and it's ready for us to log in. So that just goes to show you how easy it is to start uh, controlling your software infrastructure remotely using the software APIs. To finalize, well, don't forget all of the code that I've shown in this uh, tutorial is available on, the, uh, on GitHub under Raymond Killian and I hope you've enjoyed this it's been a very long uh, tutorial tutorial 11 but there was a lot to cover um, my name is Eamon Killian and thank you very very much for watching